But he said, everybody, with Clint Lamb, I'm Mick Gillespie. Welcome to Cover Crimson, where we talk Alabama football. And, uh, man, I'm so fired up, dude, to be sitting here with you right now and starting this venture together and with a, with a great crew. But um, we we kind of have had to keep this under our hats for a little while. And then, you know, uh, this week they made it official. You did a great job on the next round, kind of – telling everybody what we're doing but uh it's gonna be great working with you again Dude, it's gonna be phenomenal uh we've we've wanted to do this for as long as i can remember and uh now we finally get the opportunity to do it i think doing it through the next round and disrupt media and just the um you know what all that's going to provide us i think that's going to be awesome i think the staff we've kind of accumulated just as far as you uh, you know, we got a couple of former players with Mike Johnson and Jake Coker, both going to be involved. You got Stacy Blackwood, you got Chris Marler, Emily Grace is going to, you know, she's with the next round, but she's going to be doing some stuff with us. So we just got a fantastic staff uh, where we're going to be able to mix and match. We're going to cover everything, but it's not just the video content. That's a huge part of it. And that's kind of mm -hmm. where you and I originally envisioned for us and what we eventually right. wanted to do together, but also it's the message board covercrimson.com where we're trying to, you know, build that thing. I've, I've already done that, uh, once with, you know, on three, it started off, I think it was BCS Alabama back then. Everyone <laughs> thought BCS meant, you know, like the BCS era and it was Bama coming soon is what it stood for. It was very confusing. Then it became Bama on three. Then it became Bama insider. Then it became Bama online. But, uh, you know, I was a lot there of Bamas the there, Clint. A lot, a lot of Bamas. Bamas. Yeah, a lot of name changes. <laughs> uh, hopefully we don't have to go through 57 name changes here. But uh, it was, you know, I, it, I've seen the process and, and kind of what all goes into it. It's kind of a slow process in the beginning, but I know we got great content. I know we got great people. And, you know, just I, I will say this about the people who are jumping aboard now. It was the same thing with, you know, when it was BCS Alabama, those people who were involved, I never forgot them. Yeah. Because, you know, those are kind of the, the day ones. Uh, everybody's going to be on board eventually. That's what you and I both believe. But it's those people who were there from the very beginning that, you know, we're going to appreciate everybody. Anybody that ever signs up, ever becomes a part of the community, we're going to love them. We're going to appreciate them. But those day ones, uh, they hit a little bit different. So if you haven't already, go sign up for uh, CoverCrimson.com. Get in on, you know, we got some scrimmage intel. We've got some other stuff. But uh, it, it's going to be fun, Mick. I can't wait, brother. I'm I'm on this message board too, man. I got I got Big Elmo in, so I mean he's 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 in there. Uh, shout out to uh, Kyle Henderson for get, you know get, kind of getting me started in this platform, uh, you know, so many years ago, like during COVID, and then Andrew Bone, you know, uh, who we both worked with. We both worked with both of those guys, you know, over yeah. the, in the different spots. But um, on three, you know, it was great. Uh, and I remember when uh, when they let me go, I was like, man, I hope I get a chance to do this again because it's so <laughs> fun, you know. And then, you know, and kind of doing my own thing, which I'm still going to do. But this was to have the opportunity to like they team me up with. And I, I'll tell you guys this right now. The show with Coker was supposed to be Clint Lamb and me. And, uh, and and they asked me, like, I didn't know Jake back then. And they're like, hey, who do you want to work with? And I'm like, I, I want to work with Clint Lamb. Like, I think that the two of us would have a great show. So you guys are going to get a show. Like, this is kind of the bonus show because we couldn't wait for Monday to do anything. Like, we got we're like, hey, we got to just do something, right? Because we had a scrimmage. We got to talk football. We we'll lay this out. So, you know, but you guys, will you, you'll get used to seeing us live and we'll be doing shows and you can get in the comments section and all that stuff. But we were going to do this and then, you know, it, it just, I don't know, Clint, you can talk about it if you want or not, but it didn't work out. And then it ended up being Jake Coker, which has been great too. And now I get to work with both of you guys. So, and Mike Johnson, my old partner. So it's, that's why I wanted to be with, cover crimson that's why i wanted to work with disrupt uh, i love the guys at disrupt but the opportunity to get on here and you know bullcrap alabama every day with you guys is why i got into this just to have a good time and that's exactly what we're looking for is just we want people who have a passion for the same things we do who believe that alabama has one of the most interesting sports programs of all time, regardless of sport. That's I truly believe that to my absolute core. The fact that you ended up having for what was universally considered the greatest college football coach of all time for so long in Paul Bear Bryant, 
and then you go through like this little bit of you know, I mean, it's a lull. I mean, I think we can all agree it was a pretty yeah. big lull. You had some highs in there as well. You had a national championship in 1992. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's not like it was all there were some uh, bad years, though. There were some bad years. There really was. And then to see, you know, to, to then get Nick Saban, and then not only do you go through the same thing again, it's like we all, I grew up with my dad talking about the Bear Bryant era mm-hmm. yeah. and how, you know, incredible it was. And then just for me, being as old as I was, by the time Nick Saban got there, I was a junior in high school, watching how everything, you know, just started to take off for him. My best friend in high school, William Ming, ended up going to play for him when we graduated. Uh, and just, you know, it, it, it's incredible because we got to live it not only to the extent of the Bear Bryant era, but really in a lot of ways exceed it because of what all Nick Saban was able to accomplish in a much shorter period of time. And just what other, you know, sports team out there can really say something like that. So if you believe that this is one of the greatest sports teams of all time, as far as programs and just the way the ah. entire thing's been built through the decades, which I don't yeah. think... It, it, this is the place for you because this is why we're both passionate about it. We love covering it. We love doing it. And uh, that's exactly what we plan to do, Mick. And the other thing too, and I'm going to tell you guys this, I mean this from the bottom of my heart. I love Alabama and I hate Auburn. <laughs> so if that's, if those two things fit you, then you're in the right place. Uh, no, I, I, I mean, you're I'm right. joking, kind of joking, but I'm really serious. Like w- I just want to be, around people that are like like us that absolutely love Alabama not for paycheck but because they love it like this is a project of passion man you know like when Alabama loses I don't just get on and do a show and I'm pissed off I'm angry for a week two weeks <laughs> three weeks like sometimes for a whole year when it's you know when, it, when it's Auburn but well, I'm not gonna lie at- Mick there's been some times brother where uh I'm supposed to have an article going live or as soon as that, you know, final second mm-hmm. on the clock goes off. It's like it's ready to hit sin. And I'm so emotionally attached to whatever's going on that I look at my, my screen and I'm like, I've got a sentence written of this thing. I don't know. What, <laughs> and I mean, I, yeah. the, the, the Iron Bowls in Auburn the last two times, both of them. I was writing a certain thing. I was trying to, you know, get it done where I could get it out as quickly as possible. And then the miracle at the end happens, whether it be Bryce Young leading the drive to send it to overtime, a couple of overtimes, whether it be Jalen Milrow to whoever that was that caught that touchdown. I don't, I don't know if I can't recall the name off the top Got of my that head. Guy. Yeah. Uh, but you know, just the, I think the grave digger. Uh, I mean, it's <laughs> like, man, I'll tell you what, um, it, the, the, the article went in a completely different direction. It's the miracle <laughs> happened. They're still in it. All right, but it's right. just, it's been such a fun ride, man. I, I can't wait to continue doing this <laughs> with you, brother. Cause I, I know we're going to have a hell of a time. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I like when grave digger happened, I was doing the post game show with catfish and I, he, my TV was ahead of his. So I turned his microphone on and <laughs> <laughs> See if everybody got like his genuine reaction, which is pretty funny. That show's coming on our channel. You know, I'm moving the post game show. It's coming over on to cover Crimson, so that'll be fun, man. And and you're right, dude. Like it's had it's been an incredible ride. I mean, I can't honestly, I I, I can't believe it because they were so bad when I was in school. That, you know, to be able to like cover the team. And I worked for Crimson Tide Sports Network when Nick Saban got there. And I saw the whole process from behind the scenes, how it happened, how he did it, you know, how we got to where we were to where we are. And honestly, you know, in kind of changing gears, I really like Kalen DeBoer. I, I like his per- his personality is a lot closer to mine than Coach Saban. I, I love Coach Saban too, but I, I don't have a lot in common with Coach Saban when it comes to dealing with people and talking to people <laughs> and just some of the people skills that he didn't have towards the media. And, and by the way, he's one of us now, you know? <laughs> he is, yeah. It's he so better get used to it. Me. Well, I love him, though. Look, I'd go get my picture taken with him and give him a hug. And he's sitting, but he always made me nervous when I was around him. You know, everybody, like, you know what I'm saying? Every, I met DeBoer at the mullet toss and he was awesome. Like, we're all just hanging out. <laughs> Ryan Williams, me, Jake Coker, him, Nate Oates, Jalen Milrow, you know, <laughs> Malachi Moore. I was like, I, I felt like I knew the guy forever. And, and I'm, I, but don't mistake 
his kindness for weakness. The guy is an assassin. He's motivated. He knows what it takes to win. And and I and I think that Alabama fans are need to probably appreciate the fact that we got someone that's coming in and and it's going to fit this era of athlete a lot better. I think personality wise, not not success wise, but personality wise. Yeah, you're a thousand percent correct. And I mean, it, it. I'll never forget the first time that I went into SEC media days. It was probably what twenty either 2016 or 2017, but just. I'd been told what it was like kind of being around Nick Saban in those at type of atmospheres. You don't fully understand it until you're in a room with the guy. I mean, I had seen several coaches. Obviously, Alabama always went, uh, you know, day three. Um, and, you know, a, a lot of times you would have seen a lot of coaches beforehand. It depends on what you, when you got there. But the, you think you it's going to go one way, and then he walks in the room and just the tension – that he automatically created with the media. And it, it, that's not just Alabama local media. That's everybody. This is people that are covering South Carolina and Vanderbilt and everybody else. It's just like he commanded such a presence, and it was just it was crazy. But Kalen DeBoer couldn't be more opposite. And I will say this, Mick, for Alabama fans, it, I would say for the rest of college football, you better people better hope that Kalen DeBoer is not another – Paul Barrett, Bryant, Nick Saban type. Doesn't mean he's got to have the same success. We're not putting mm -hmm. those, those kind of expectations. But if they keep this thing going, I, Mick, I don't think the rest of college football is going to be able to handle it very well. Mm -mm, no, they're they're waiting for us to collapse. You can see I, it. I love it, though. And honestly, Clint, I didn't want to say this last year, but I felt like there were a lot of times where Saban looked old. Saban looked like it, it was the, the job was becoming big. Like when you couldn't figure out how to get the snaps in. You know, and 25 bad snaps. And uh, Saban of Young would have ripped penalties. that guy's head off. Yeah, penalties. the penalties, man. That yeah, was like, the one of the biggest signs right. to me. Watching what was the receiver that went to the NFL that was just constantly kind of doing dumb shit. And you're like, what is this guy doing, man? Like, that isn't the Alabama way. You don't get a 15-yard penalty for getting in somebody's face. Or, you know, that kind of stuff was never Nick Saban's style. That was never Alabama's style. And, and I kind of felt like for him – it was kind of like you get to that age where you're 72 and you're trying to coach the coaches, you're trying to coach the players, and and it gets the job gets really big. I, I feel like Kalen DeBoer comes in and he's younger, he's hungry, he has the bad taste of losing that championship last year in his mouth. He went through the same thing when he was in the lower levels of college when, and before he went on that run where he was winning championships every year, you know, and lost one and 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 that that was a, a driver for him. And now we're looking at this. Everything he's done so far has been amazing, right? The recruiting. Well, he's not going to be able to recruit. Now they're going to have to fight. They're going to have to fight Auburn for these in-state guys because Auburn's going all in on the in-state guys. And that's a whole nother sh topic for a whole nother show. But I got a feeling before it's all said and done, we're going to be fine in that area. He's done great recruiting. He's done great with the NIL game. Uh, he kept guys on the team. The, you can tell that the the uh, there's an electricity with this group. They love being out there. They're playing hard. But the you know the fact that they've opened it up to the media, getting the program out there. But today was the first scrimmage. What it, do you think? I, I will say, um, it was <laughs> Kalen DeBoer's got a little bit more Nick Saban in him than some realize, <laughs> and right. you can tell in his post from his press conference that he does the way he can kind of elude questions and he and he gets asked i mean uh it was actually pretty remarkable he was asked what is your biggest concern about this team right now mm -hmm. and he very strategically said staying healthy and it's like okay that revealed absolutely nothing yeah it's a correct answer and any coach they would uh, regardless of what their concerns are keeping guys healthy has to be the top priority but that's right. all, that's always kind of understood yeah, but that's also a trap question for him, and he understood that, and he navigated the waters extremely well. He was asked about the receivers and just you know uh, how they performed. He said they were they did make plays. There were some explosives, uh, but he also mentioned that they spread the ball around quite a bit, and he would not mention anybody specifically by name. Part of me, Nick, and I'm speculating. I want it to be known that I'm speculating, but part of me thinks that he's trying to keep Ryan Williams as much as you possibly can on the hush hush. He wants, you know, he wants that secret weapon 
that people knows coming but doesn't quite know that they're coming. I'm not saying he's going to be like a day one starter, but I think he's, you know, every time he's getting opportunities in these types of settings, the guy's making plays. Uh, and he's still a freshman. It's just like this entire team. We can hype up guys and talk about all the good. We can talk about the entire team. We can talk about killing DeBoer. There's going to be bumps along the road. I don't mm-hmm. want anybody to mistake this and think this is going to be Nick Saban's type of Alabama, you know, the the, the previous, um, you know, the early parts of Nick Saban where everything was just seemingly perfect all the time. That's not what we're saying at all. But I will say for a post-Nick Saban era, this is about as much as you could have asked for if you're an Alabama fan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you didn't get Kirby to come over from Georgia, this is really the next best option to me. And and in other ways, it might be a little bit better too, uh, because the football, the fo- college football, has turned into an offensive game. They make all the rules to benefit the offense, and so you still want to have a strong defense. But man, you got to have good offense to be able to go out there and compete. And that's kind of what Kalen DeBoer uh, is known to do now. What have you heard from practice? Have you gotten some reports yet? And I know Ryan Williams. I, I heard Ryan Williams might have caught a, a deep pass in this game. I mean, it's it's going pretty well. You know, I heard Caleb uh, uh, Odom ended up having a really big catch. Uh, granted, it was with, you know, I think the second team, if I'm not mistaken. Don't remember who the quarterback was, but everybody was saying it was pretty spectacular. Uh, I, I did get a text from a source and I didn't get a whole lot of information off the, off the jump or during the scrimmage at all. Uh, one thing I'll give Kalen DeBoer credit for is he's kind of, he's trying to keep things as, you know, hush, hush as he possibly can about all of it. He, it's not just his press conferences. He, he doesn't want to be super open about some of this stuff. Uh, he wants to surprise some people a little bit. But uh, I heard that Josh Cuevas is a guy that we need to be talking about more. You know, we, we've seen him work with the first team offense quite a bit. I, he's got two really good tight ends that he's also battling, really three if you include Danny Lewis. But mm-hmm. with Robbie Utes and with CJ Dupree, all four of those guys are really good. Really, that entire tight end room is very promising and very good. Uh, so I don't know exactly where Cuevas is going to fit into the equation. We talk about how much potential and talent he might have or what he could uh, potentially add. But, you know, there, there are other guys that are vying for playing time, too, there that certainly deserve it as well. So I'll be curious to see what exactly his workload looks like. But, they, you know, the, the source told me this guy can flat out play. And, mm-hmm. you know, he was surprised that he that Cuevas wasn't a much bigger part of Washington's offense last year. Now, they had Jack Westover. They had uh, the tight end uh, ended up actually getting drafted. I forget his name. It was kind of a, a, a nowhere name player, uh, but still was effective in their offense as kind of a, a complimentary piece. Um, so I kind of understand it to an extent, but I've been hearing good things about Quavis. I've been hearing good things about Dupree. Uh, but I mean, there's a lot of guys. I mean, uh, DeBoer said today, I'll go ahead and throw this out there. It was 102 plays. 81 of the plays were divvied up between the ones and the twos. And then I think 21 were given to the threes. So if I had to guess, um, you know, you're probably looking at 40 to 50 for the ones. You're probably looking at 30 to 40 mm-hmm. for the twos. And then you're looking at about 20 for the the threes. And, you know, he was very complimentary of a lot of guys, a lot of the different position groups, uh, Justice Haynes and Jam Miller. They were exclusively working with the ones mm-hmm. uh, and, and twos. They were very involved with that. You also no got surprise there. Well, no surprise yeah. there. I mean, this is it, the reason that the guys left and didn't fight hard to keep them is because it was time for these guys to get their chance. Great point. I mean, that's exactly what it is, Mick. Uh, and and Jace McClellan, I think he's going to be a heck of an NFL player. So this mm-hmm. isn't a knock on him. It's not a no. knock on Roy Dell Williams. I think he's going to be a good player for Florida yeah. State. Uh, it's just that it was, you know, from the beginning of last year, the belief was that the two most talented running backs on the roster were working as the third and fourth running backs. Mm-hmm. And you can't have that, especially in the transfer portal era, yep. two years in a row, because these guys probably knew it. And so it was understandable how the things kind of played out the way that they did. Now you get yep. an opportunity to have one of the best one, two punches at running back in all of college football, even if they're not being viewed like that preseason. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Uh, cornerbacks. Big part of what my concern is for this football team right now uh, with all the transfers and guys in the NFL. I mean, look, you got your two corners from last year, <laughs> like NFL guys now, 
uh, transfer portal guys coming in, Jackson and uh, and uh, Deshaun no. Jones, right? Yeah. So what what do you think there? And then um, how about these freshmen? I mean, are we going to see Brown or Mbakwe or Mincy? I mean, are those guys going to be fighting for playing time? You know, any word from the scrimmage? Well, uh, you know, Zabian Brown's dealing with a hand injury. He's got the club on. So, you know, he did. You remember the, the car? Sorry, you remember the club that you, they used to have for the cars? They put that thing on the on the. On the I'm, 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 is this you I'm too that? young for this kind of thing? <laughs> they used to have this thing called the club, and you would put it on your steering wheel, and it would lock, and then you could, apparently you wouldn't oh. be able to steal the car. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> Why, where did those go, by the way? Those just know. disappeared off the face of the earth. GPS. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, I guess so. Um, right, yeah. Go back, go back. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so he's working with the hand injury. So I don't. I, I do think he got some work in today's scrimmage, but I think he's working uh, not with the first team, might not even be working with the second team right now, but that's not an indication of anything you need to be concerned with him other right. than just getting healthy before the season. Yeah, but you know, you saw uh, obviously Damani Jackson was working the, with the ones. From what we've heard, uh, it actually could have been Deshaun Jones. Uh, I did have one source that said that. I haven't. Can I, I typically like to confirm a lot of this stuff with multiple right. people? But um, Jalen and Bakway got some action with the first team and with the second team as well. So he's involved there. But Deshaun Jones, I mean, he was brought in as a transfer player to start. Yeah, but yeah, to at least battle for that starting job so i mean at this point and we've seen this in the past like a tyler steen get comes in uh and everybody assumes he's going to be one of the two starting tackles he did end up being that but it's like you're a, a summer transfer you haven't been here you can't just start off with the first team you know day one practice one of fall camp so deshaun jones is kind of the same way that does not mean that he's going to beat out Xavier brown I think it's mostly going to be those two guys battling it out, but we had not heard a whole lot about Deshaun Jones up to this point. Mm -hmm. In fact, when I was seeing him go through some of the lines, he was a little bit further back. Now that's not an automatic indication, uh, but you know, it was something to at least note when scrimmage time rolls around though, Jones probably got his opportunity to work with the first team. Uh, I don't know how he performed, but both he and, and in Bakwe, I mean, if they can really get a couple of these guys established on top of having Damani Jackson, you got to feel really good about uh, really good about this Alabama team because you feel great about a lot of these other spots and cornerback is really the the one place where you're like there's some glaring uh, question marks and mm -hmm. so that's the, if they can get that addressed and not only get two starting caliber players but maybe get a little bit of depth there as well. Uh, if you're an Alabama fan, you would need to feel really good about it. Yep, yep, yep. Well, we'll talk more about this as things go forward. And then, of course, you and I are going to be on uh, Monday through Friday now on the channel. So make sure if you're not a subscriber, make sure you subscribe and then go to the message board and be a part of that. They'll be posting information on there. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not just going back and forth, but these guys have a lot of sources. So there's a lot of inside information that you guys can get um, from the message board. And I'm going to be on there making jokes. I, I asked uh, someone from Northport what the best Northport bar was, uh, the Cross the River Club or Steve's Billiards. I, that, I'm going old school with that. <laughs> Steve's is where I used to get my Leonard's Losers back in the day. Uh, <laughs> All right, Clint. What do we have this? I I know I'll, I'll digress back to what we what, what do we have going on this week football wise? What what can people look forward to? Well, we're the the video content is going to be jam packed, and the message board's already there, and it's just a matter of you know we're we're building it. People are coming in all the time, and and we're not going to stop until it is the top Alabama message board for fans. Period. Uh, whatever we need to do, and we want every single person listening to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, we love the conversations. There's never too many questions and we can put a lot, you know, there for a while when I was kind of making my transition and I wouldn't really do anything for, for Bama online, but I hadn't officially joined uh, cover crimson yet. I was putting a lot of my information on Twitter. Uh, it just, and it's just a lot to type out. It's, mm -hmm. it's a lot. You got to click on it and read. It's so much easier to put it in the message board post. You can get a lot more covered, let people read it. Certainly want people to uh, contribute and, and throw in their thoughts. If you think something I say is dumb, tell me. I don't mind. It, let's have a conversation about it. Uh, but, you know, the, the number one thing is that message board and then also just all the video content. It's not just going to be like a daily live show. We're also going to have a lot of breakdowns, uh, you know, multiple videos probably going out pretty much every day. 
and we're going to try to give people the content that they want. So if there's something that you want us to talk about or want us to cover, uh, let us know. And we'll certainly do our best to do that. This is for you guys. This is for the fans, for the people who subscribe, for the people who listen. And uh, we're excited about getting it going. So it, it's going to be a jam-packed week as we get closer to kickoff. It's three weeks from today. College football <sighs> kicks off in two weeks. And, and make it couldn't get here any faster. Yeah, it's on the way. I'm just thinking about my radio show that I got to get my <laughs> get stuff ready for. <laughs> You'll be on there some. You'll be on oh, there. Yeah. Coker's yeah. going to be on there. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Clint and I will be back uh, on Monday, and we are looking forward to seeing you guys then. Roll Tide, everybody.